Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it is Monday, January 14th, and it's very rainy <laughs> here in Southern California. It's a nice change, and since I'm from Oregon, I actually really enjoy the rain. Um, it feels really cozy, especially if you're not out in it. Um, although I was out in it grocery shopping this morning, and that was also kind of nice because no one else was out, and it was really easy to get in and out of the grocery store. <laughs> Some of my groceries got a little wet, but you know, they can handle it. So here's my kitty. She wanted to join me too because it's kind of chilly and she likes to cuddle a lot more in the winter time. So let's get started. Um, I've had a decent stitching week this week um, and I have one thing to show you, actually two things, but they're related to show you that I bought this week. Um, there was a heaven and earth design sale <sighs> early in the week last week. I can't, I don't think it's still going, but it might be. So if you are watching this today, feel free to go over and check. I'm not sure when they said it was going to be done. 50% off, which is my ideal um, sale over there, of course. Um, it's the lowest I think they've ever gone. And they do it periodically a couple, a few times a year. So I don't need any more full coverage. And I've been, it's been very easy to not buy patterns over there for all their past, like most recent sales because I have plenty and I have maybe four more on my wish list that are nice that I may get eventually, but right now I'm satisfied with what I've got, and especially since I can't start anything right now, I'm content. However, I recently finished my diamond painting as you saw last time. And there is a pattern, there was a pattern on my wish list that I had earmarked to do in diamond painting. So I decided, well, this is as good a time as any, might as well give it a go. So I bought Quick Stitch Tranquil Tulip and I'm gonna do this in diamond painting. It'll be about five centimeters larger in height and width than my son's piece and which is just a touch bigger than the one I did before. So it's, it's a similar size to what I've done before, which is a nice size for me, not so big it falls off the table, um, but big enough to have some detail. And since it's, I have an inert design, I know it's gonna be pretty. <laughs> it's got, um, so it'll be like, I think it's like 35 by 45 centimeters is the canvas that I bought. What I did is I went, I bought this from Heaven and Earth Designs. This is a regular pattern. Um, and I went to stitchestones.com and they're based in the Australia. And, but they had free shipping over $10, which is good. You'll get there pretty quickly if you're kidding something up. Um, so I bought a blank canvas that's got, it's white with grid lines, just like, you know, easy count fabric would be. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just follow the pattern. The pattern will be lying next to me. I'll just follow it. Um, I like having the symbols printed on the grid, like the kits that you can find for diamond painting, but I don't want to have to try to spend the money to get someone to do that because it seems like um, that service is quite expensive. So I'm happy to try it <clears throat> old school. Um, and st Stitches to Stones also had all the color DMC colors of little resin diamonds available as well. So I got everything I need because Heaven and Earth Designs will tell you exactly how many stitches you need of each color so then you know their packets have approximately 200 diamonds in them and you can calculate how many packets you need of each color. So that should be on its way. I have not received a shipping notice yet and it is coming from Australia so it should be a little while before I receive it but hopefully not too long because today I got this from Amazon which I was super excited. It came in this, this resealable, resealable bag. These are little storage containers that I bought to put the diamonds in because I had been using a, a recipe box with baggies in like a file system because my last diamond painting only had like maybe 24 colors or something and this one has 90 <laughs> so it's quite a few more. The file system wasn't going to work too well for this. Um, so what I got were four of these little um, boxes that can hold tiny little things and they're very small 
But I read reviews that said they're, you know, they hold a decent amount in each one, at least one package, but I think some say two or three in each little thing. Um, so I might have to get used to them because it looks like they might be a little bit hard to open. But there we go. Just don't open them backwards. <laughs> then you can open them up and use one. They come with, this This particular one came with some stickers, so you can just label them with the DMC number, put it on top, and know which one it is. And there's, um, because I needed 90, um, have 90 colors, I got four boxes, which is 112 slots. And so some of the bigger colors, I can maybe give two or three slots. And it came in a resealable bag, which is pretty cool because I can just store them in here and when I'm ready to do my diamond painting, I'll grab the whole bag, which has, which will have all my colors. And it will possibly even have room for the colors for my last diamond painting that I won't need for this one, but um, I could still organize them all together in case I do something in the future that needs them too. So I, I only had like maybe four colors for my old one that were also in this one so that was a little disappointing but where I had them I'm using them so um I'm really excited about that to do some organizing <laughs> when my diamonds come in um so that's going to be a fun project um eventually which I will allow myself to start because it is not cross stitch um I wasn't necessarily thinking I would start another diamond painting anytime soon, but when that sale showed up on Heaven and Nurse Designs, I'm like, you know what? I think I want to do that. So I did. <laughs> um, so again, I'll show you my supplies when they come in, but um, it may not be for a little while. Um, what I did work on stitching wise this week, I was supposed to work on my letter S fairy last Monday after my, after I filmed by Nora Corbett. And I had some technical difficulties figuring out my video after I filmed. And so I only ended up having a tiny bit of time. I, I let myself stop working on the video and come in here and stitch and just finished up my video on Tuesday because um, I knew I wouldn't have any time to stitch that night and I didn't. So I only got like a half hour, 20 minutes the um, Friday ap Monday afternoon and then ended up finishing up my string on Tuesday morning because I really wanted to just at least finish one string. So I got one string done, which is fun. These little fairies are so small that even one string, you can see the progress. And it was a fairly long string. So um, this is what it looked like before. Kitty, you're not helping. And here's where I got two now. Not a whole lot and you could probably see I did right in here one string of wing which I am blending with um, one strand of Krynic blending filament and this particular wing I'm doing one strand of floss and one strand of blending filament on my other fairy I'm doing two strands of floss and one strand of filament but I wanted some sparkle in the wings that is not called for on the pattern but I thought it would be a fun touch and it makes them a lot more blue than they normally would be but they sparkle <laughs> and I wanted them to sparkle so that's what I did with that one and so that was the one day on that not a ton but something and then I went back to my waterfall in Yosemite Whoa. things are falling <laughs> that's what this looks like it's the mini version by Golden Kite and there's lots of blends and whatnot on this pattern. This is what that looked like last time. And here it is now. The light is very gloomy today, but this is the best we're going to be able to do. Um, I finished this column since I saw you last and extended beyond, except for like one square in there because when I was over in this column back here, the color I was using literally had like less than half an inch left of my thread and it just wasn't <laughs> going to make that last stitch and I was so bummed but I just, even if I had managed to thread the needle with 
like it was just longer than the eye of the needle. It was how long it was, oh, it was ridiculous. I wouldn't have been able to secure the thread anyway. So I just cut my losses and there's like one stitch right here <laughs> that didn't get done. Otherwise this column is finished too, which is nice. And a, you know, a start on the next one. Getting closer, this actually extends into this next page. So I actually crossed the page break right here, um, which is cool. And I got about, it was 900 and something stitches I counted, and which is not enough for the By the Numbers Challenge for 1,200 stitches. I'm like 233 stitches short or something. But I'm not gonna worry about it. I could work on this more and get the 200 with just a, a, you know, a couple days worth of work, if I had been more diligent throughout the time I was working on it, I could have probably gotten to 1200 fairly easily, but that's kind of the way it goes. But after all is said and done, I am I decided I'm not gonna worry about the by the numbers challenge. Um, I don't wanna spend more time on this this month because I don't wanna shortchange the other projects that I've chosen. And I really don't enjoy counting my stitches and I really don't, like having like feeling like I have to do a certain amount in a certain length of time that's not it makes it not enjoyable for me so I've decided for I won't do by the numbers um, and I didn't do it last year but for this one since I knew it was potential that I could maybe do it each month and it is potential that I could do it some months but I don't think the the um, I don't think it's worth it to me to, to bother counting my stitches and get slightly more stressed about it trying to finish that many stitches. I just want to work on it for six or seven days and enjoy it while I'm working on it, not have to worry about counting stitches, and just how far I get is how far I get. So um, that's it for that piece for this month, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I fin pretty much finished that column. And it was like a column and a half is overall the seven days. And that's pretty decent. It's 18 count full crosses. So um, the it takes longer than some of my other projects that have half stitches. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I'm not going to revisit it anymore in January. I'll just pick it back up again, most likely at the beginning of February. So um, the next thing I worked on was one day on my ants. Piece, quick stitch iris by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I really enjoyed working on this. It's it's weird to do a full coverage for one day because there really isn't a lot of progress um, able to be made in one day, but for one day, I think I did a good job. This time around anyways, it was on a Friday. Fridays can often be a good stitching day. Um, and this, this Friday was good. So this is what that looked like before. And here it is now. Um, I finished out this column. There was a lot of little bits along the edge that I had not yet done that were lots of confetti, several different colors. And so I took started with those colors and finished them in this, this main column I had been in, as well as this column, and then parked them in the third or beyond. And then when that was done and and this when that was done and this column was all the way finished, then I started up here and started working on some of these colors at the top. So I'm pretty happy with how far I got. Um, this is the beginning of an iris right here. So that's why the all the confetti, because there's some background here and, and here, but right in here it was the start of some of the petals. So there was a lot of confetti along the edge um, of the petal. So for one day, that's really good. And I'm really happy to be giving this some love. Since it is a smaller piece, I figured one day here and there, you know, it should, you know, every little bit adds up. So that was a lot of fun. And then after that, I, I pulled out Winter Queen by Mirabilia. And I got, a de again, a decent amount of time on Saturday to work on it, but not, um, not any time at all yesterday. Uh, we were at church and then vi visiting my parents and 
got home late and I had to put the grocery list together and never had time to work on this. I worked on my travel piece in the car and a tiny bit on Storytime Sampler, but not anything on this one. So um, today I have one more day on it, so I'm hoping to finish out my goal, I guess, on this piece today. So hopefully my video will <laughs> cooperate and get finished quickly and um, then I'll get some stitching time later today. So this is what this looked like before. And here she is now. Again, sorry it's so dark in here, but um, got all the lights on that I can. The one behind me that I like would make it too backlit, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I used that to stitch by, but it would be backlit for the video. So I was working up here in her face and Saturday I was able to finish the stitching in her in her face pretty much I think yeah all the all the skin the light color and the dark color so that now I can go back and backstitch her face so hopefully I can do that today get her backstitched so she looks a little bit more alive and if there's time work on some of her hair and crown and stuff so we'll see we'll see what kind of time I have today they always look so much better once you get the the lips and eyelids and stuff finished. Hey, Kitty. I know I'm moving around a lot, Kitty. It's not conducive to your nap, I'm sure. This one, the fabric is very loose. It's MCG Textiles White Linen, 32 count linen, um, which the weave is not terrible. It's, it's fairly even, um, but it's really floppy <laughs> and soft, which is kind of nice, but it's, um, my roll doesn't stay tight, which sometimes on stiffer fabric, it's easier to keep the roll tight. So I have to constantly um, readjust my roll, which is a little bit annoying, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, one more day on that. And then I will do my plans here in a little bit. Also this week I worked on Little House Needleworks October, which is uh, my travel piece. So a couple times throughout the week, I was able to work on this. So that's what that, this is what it looked like last time. And here I am now. I was able to do some of the fencing and started in on this pumpkin and I'm working the pumpkin up and down so that um, the any variegation that shows up will look more like pumpkin you know, lines, which are vertical. So I thought, it, so far it's turning out pretty good. There's a little bit more variegation than I realized at first in the orange color. So I think it'll look nice. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's so dark in here, but I think it looks nice. And that was fun to work on. I had somebody in the orthodontist come up to me and say, what are you working on? And she thought it was pretty, she was pretty impressed. And I don't know how much she knew about cross stitch at all, but she was like, wow, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> um, I also worked a little bit on Storytime Sampler, which I guess I don't need to show that. Um, here it is. Um, Shelly Key X Stitch came over to stitch on Thursday. And so this is what I worked on while she was here. So I had a couple small little chunks throughout the week, but most of it was while Shelly was here. So that was a lot of fun to get some significant progress on this. So that this is what it looked like before. And here it is now. I guess I'll do all of it. Um, these guys are coming along. You can see their outlines now. I'm doing color by color amongst the two blocks. And I'm picking colors from the top down. Um, so like here up is finished. <laughs> Um, but I've got, you know, the light brown and the brick color and pink finished now, dark brown, black. So that's been fun. Making progress. Shelly beat me to finish this one. She finished this one and she had Happily Ever After almost done and then finished that one too. Um, because I believe Pumpkinville is their new sal and that's coming out. Maybe tomorrow. Um, 
I'm not doing that one, but she is. And so she was kind of wanting to get some of her other um, st stitch alongs finished. And she's been stitching like a mad woman and got a lot of things done this past, you know, few weeks. So that's been fun. I worked on just a little bit. I worked on my temperature pieces. I worked on them once, I think, since since I filmed my video. So I do need to get caught up on those. So I'll probably do that uh, maybe tomorrow because I don't want to take time away from Winter Queen. So maybe tomorrow I'll get caught up on these. But this is what my balloons look like before. And here it is now. I've got a full top row of the balloon. So now I'll come back over here and start in on the second row. Each balloon has a different pattern. So they're not all horizontal. Some of them are diagonal. Some of them are like chevrons or diamonds or different things. So they're, they, um, I tried to make each balloon have a little bit different pattern and flavor. So this, per this current balloon is horizontal. And this is where my quilt was before. And here it is now with I believe just three more days on both of these. But this was fun. These th last three used six different colors. So I had three different hots, three different colds. None of them were the same. So that was kind of fun that it's turning out pretty um, colorful as far as they're all the cool colors, but they are fairly colorful. It's a little, as before, a little bit warmer in person, but. Um, so both of those are turning out pretty well. I, I'm really enjoying those. I will hopefully get caught up here. Be able to show you some more next time. And now I think I can do plans. So that's everything that I worked on this week. So going forward, I'll do one more day on Winter Queen and then I'm gonna do Stitcher's Retreat because my um, the Full Coverage Fanatics monthly theme for January is cozy, and so I was picking things that, from all of my projects, that kind of referenced winter or cozy. So this one is very cozy to me. The Stitcher's Retreat by Heaven and Earth Designs, and I am doing a cropped version. I've showed this before, but I'm cropping mine to just that center portion. I'm cropping off the top two rows bottom two rows and the first column and the last two columns if you feel like cropping it as well and it used to be a free chart on heaven and earth designs website it is no longer there and i don't believe it's anywhere else on their site so you might be able to find it on another site somewhere but um i know a lot of you already downloaded it as when it, when it was free so um that's that's my cropping in case anybody wants to do it that way this I'm doing extreme cross country and I'm still working on the first color. So it will be fun to see um, how much more I can get done on this dark dark brown, 3371 I think is the one it is. So this is where I'm at. I've got the heads of the two ladies finished. And last time I started working on the lamp and worked down into here to get the some of the background started in that dark color. Cause I'm doing, this color is the color that's the most common color with the most stitches and so I thought well if I do that that first I will have a little bit of a framework with which to do the other colors for counting so that's my plan with that one hopefully um, I'll have some good days available to work on that a little bit and give that three days and then I'm gonna do my Winter Wonderland Band Sampler by Chatelaine. I'll give that three days. And I am here working on this scene. I still need to finish the trees and the cabins before moving down to work on the little animals, which I would love to work on the little animals. I'm not sure how quickly I'll be able to finish the cabins and things, because there's a lot of little color changes in there. But that's the scene I'm working on, at least. So this is where this is right now. I'm working completely beads and all from the top down. So everything is finished except for this scene. Like from here up is all done. And I put in 2017 because that's the year I finished. I, that's the year I started it. And it's the year 
you know, I tried my first Chatelaine, which is significant. Um, I'm trying to remember when Martina passed, because it might have been the year she passed too, and then that would be kind of a memorial to her too. It might have, I don't remember though. I know I bought Summer, the Summer Band Sampler, when, um, when I found out she passed, just so I could have a companion to this. Um, but I don't remember. <laughs> so I have these trees to finish. This, this cabin is done. So I'll be working on this cabin and these trees before moving down to the little animals and the little like birdhouse thing. Um, so that'll be fun. Th th this is on 32 count ice blue linen by Zweigert. And I have enough fabric to do the other one on. So when I when I bought that pattern, I just put the other half of this. I think I got a fat, I forget what I got, but I cut it in half to do this one and then I um, already kitted the other pattern with the other piece of fabric. So they will match. And I, I believe in the writing of the on the listing it it sounds like there were was at some point either in her mind or on e like a print version of spring and autumn gardens like that the band samplers but they're not on the website so i i asked her daughter who is currently overseeing all of that if she knew of, you know, if those had been charted and just hadn't been digitalized yet, if that would be a possibility, but I had, I never heard back. So I don't know it some, it someday that would be lovely to have one for each season. I would love that. So, um, in which case I'd just get more linen and make them all match. And that would be really fun because those are really pretty. They're, they're fun to work on. They have silk and metallic and beads and that just makes it a joy. So the other, the next three day rotation will be my oldest whip, Midsummer Roses. And I'll start this next Monday, but because next Monday in the US is Martin Luther King Day, my husband and kids actually have it off from um, school and work. So I probably won't be filming on Monday. I'll film hopefully Tuesday. So I figured I'd show you this anyways, because I'll have at least one day of work on it by the time I see you again, so. <clears throat> this is where this is now. Let's see how to best show you. It's all curled up. <laughs> this is on 14 count, like antique white, Ada probably, and it is not wanting to uncurl. So let's see. There we go. There we go. Um, I finished all of this a while back. This this whip is like 20 some odd years old. I'm working in, up here in the flowers and I figured I would start color completing um, as I go. So all the yellow stitching is done and I'm working on the pink stitching. What would be cool this time around is if I can finish those flowers and start in on another color. So that would be lovely as a nice <clears throat> practical small goal. See, if you if you set a small goal, it feels really good to actually achieve it and move forward. If I set a lofty goal, then it's disappointing if I don't get to it. So I gotta set myself small goals. And then it can be fun when I, when I meet them and go beyond them. And then I feel like I accomplished something and it was a productive stitchy rotation. So that's all for me today, I think. Um, <clears throat> So far, I'm really enjoying um, getting to work on everything again and, and kind of move around amongst my different whips and different designers. Something I forgot, I wanted to mention, my, uh, where'd they go? My temperature quilt <clears throat> pattern. On Instagram, I'm using the hashtag temperature quilt XS because um there's already hashtags out there for temperature quilts that are actually fabric quilts because it's a thing in, in the quilting community to make temperature quilts there's s similar style to this which is where i got my inspiration and then there's also like like the more paper piecing 
English paper piecing maybe where they're like hexagons. <coughs> I saw somebody doing a temperature quilt like that using the temperature quilt hashtag. So if you want to see more people working on the cross stitch version of the temperature quilt, um, use use and follow temperature quilt XS. That's the one I decided I would use because it doesn't make it that much longer to type in, but it's um, then you get the cross stitch version. So I thought I would mention that. And other than that, I think I'm good. I hope you had a lovely week of stitching and enjoyed whatever you were working on too. And hopefully I will see you back Tuesday next week. Um, we'll see. I don't know if I have anything planned, so it may or may not be Tuesday, but hopefully I'll see you in about a week. Happy stitching. Bye.